Hello, in this short video, I'm going to walk through building a product hierarchy in the SAP Hybris C4C. So, if you're interested in SAP C4C, um, one challenge I have to do is test it. So, what I'm going to do is show how to build an automated test with WorkSoft, capture and run it with Certify for the C4C. So I've logged in, and I'll be presented with my um, main home page and my accounts. So what I want to do is actually go through and start building my automated test. So I'll click my hamburger here, and I'm going to go to my, down to the bottom, My install base, and I'm going to build a product hierarchy. So I'll close my hamburger here and go add a new item. So I'll give it a name, and I need to get a customer. And I'll look my customer up. There we go. Select it and I'll save and open. So now that I have my install base, what I need to do is go add my items. So this is where I'll build my hierarchy. So when I add my items, what I'll actually do is build a hierarchy in a complex table. And I'll go through and validate it that it's showing up correctly. So I'll start with my main level product. I'll then add a lower level product. Select that from my list. And now I'll have a text item. I'll call this my main level. And what I want to do is select that lower level that main level item and then add a lower level item. So what I've done is created a product hierarchy. If I actually expand them, I can see this. So I can see I have my 51.2 commercial, my product A, my main level, and my lower level. So in this case, what I want to do is I'm just going to click these. And that way I have my placeholders to go validate them. And I'll log out. and I'll call this my test. So what I now have is my capture file. I have all the actions I took, I have a narrative describing it, and I have the screenshots along the way. So I'll just save this off to disk and I could use this to handshake to a test automator or I can do this myself. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll transition over from using Capture to Certify. Some customers see different roles. One person is the QA person capturing or the business analyst describing. Another person is the automation engineer. In some companies, it's actually the same person. So what I'll do is I'll load my Capture file. I'll give it a name. And I'm going to put this into my C4C um, application. So now I have an automated test. So if I come open it up, let's see what's there. So my different test steps. So I need to put a password value here. 
So um, when we capture, we don't actually capture uh, the passwords and save them uh, because we know those are a little bit sensitive. So I have my password saved as an encrypted text and I'll uncomment that step. So now my test is ready to log in and start working through building the customer and the product itself. So if you remember what I did is I clicked on the different rows. The, these rows here, I did click events for the um, to make sure the products are there. What I want to do is I want to convert these into select cells to a verify. So what I will do when I do the verify cell is I will say look in the second row in the name column and what I want is it to contain 51.2 and that's because you don't want to watch me actually um, type that whole word in there. right? And then on this row I'm going to change that to be a verify cell also. And I'm going to say give me the third row, look in the name column, and it should be equal to product A. Okay. If I come to the next row, I'll do the same thing. So now I'm going to make sure that my um, text fields are correct. Go back to the name column and I'll do contains again here. Make sure this contains main. And then this last one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an invalid um, criteria here. So we see what happens when it, we have a failed test. I'll say where the name um, is equal to, let's say, contains Chris. So I'm expecting this to fail. So if I look at my test itself, what I have is I have a verification that the first row was 51.2, that the second row was product A, so I'm building my hierarchy correctly. I, oops, and then I have my text items with main, and then this contains Chris, and I fully expect this to fail. Um, that's fine, so we'll see what it looks like and we'll fix that, but it will prove that my test is doing the right thing. So what I've done is I have a process already that I'm going to go run this from. So I'm just going to come over here and take my test I created. I'm going to drag it in so I can run it. So what this process does is it goes through and opens the browser and sets it up for me. Um, so it's just going to save me some time. So when I start What we'll see here is the execution window. When I click run, um, it'll start running the test. So the first thing I do is I start the browser, navigate, and I'll do a couple settings, and then we'll see the test start running. Okay, there's the browser starting. There we go. I'll move this execution window over so you can see it. So what's going to happen now is my test will start running and it's going to do the test steps. It'll enter the um, username, the password, and then it's going to go through the same things I did. So ideally I'm testing the user interface of the C4C app, so I want to do the same things um, in my automated tests that I did manually. So I'm navigating through my tree controls on the left to bring up my install base. And then you'll see I'll start can, um, adding the um, item. So once we're there, we'll see I'll start building my hierarchy. So this is where I'm going to add the four components, the product, and the lower level product, the text item, and the lower level text item. And then I'll have my validation steps. And then um, I fully expect my test to fail because I'm actually have an invalid validation there. So this will show you what it looks like when your automated test is actually doing its job and testing for you.
So we'll add the text item. You'll notice I'll navigate into my tree, or my table, to actually highlight and expand. And now I'm going through and validating each cell. So what happened is my test actually got a failure. So let's look here. It says the column name does not, oops, the column name does not contain Chris. So my, to expect it, I put my validation the wrong way around to show what it looks like. And I'll finish out my test. And so now I'll get my results. So from a validation perspective, what I showed was actually what happens if my test fails. I can say I was looking for um, the Chris, but if I look at my step image, it actually has lower level. So we showed that we could write an automated test to actually go through and manipulate the UI, um, add a complex product hierarchy, and then I showed what happens if something went wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'll come back over here. Let me go fix that. So in my um, test itself, what I expect is not to find Chris here, but I'm expecting that to have um, lower level, right? So I'm going to go update my test. and then I'll run it because this will show you what it looks like to, when the test actually runs successfully. Okay. So I'll run the same way. My initial steps will launch my browser, set things up, and we'll go from there. And there's my browser launching put over here my execution window so you can see it. And my test starts running. I'm going to enter my username and my password and log in. So what we've seen here is I use Capture. This could be a business analyst, this could be a QA person, or someone in the end of Sprint who's trying to document that something's working in the user interface. Maybe they've done some customizations in C4C and they've captured that and then the the capture file was then used to generate an automated test case. You notice um, I had very little editing of it. This is a scriptless test so I don't have to write code to do this. Um, you'll notice that the um, test manipulates CY the same way. I start building my product hierarchy and then I'll do my validations to make sure that the products line up in the hierarchy the correct way. So from a automation perspective, this is a pretty cool way to test your C4C. Here we go. We're building our sub product. Got my lower level. Now I'll add my text. I selected my main text level and I'll go add my lower level text. We'll go expand the hierarchy, and then I've got my validation steps. We'll make sure that I have 51.2, product A, main level, lower level, and then in my test. So in this case, I expect to get a passing test, which I did. I can have my documentation of what's happened. I've got all my steps through the user interface. I can see the UI as it changes. All my screenshots are saved from my reports. Um, quite honestly, the passing tests usually aren't as interesting as the failing tests, but there you go. This is what it looks like to actually build an automated test case against C4C, um, the hybrid um, cloud for customer, and automating it with WorkSoft Certify. Thank you.